I'd like to introduce you to Dr. Gemma Green. Hi, Gemma. She's co-founder and chairman of Power Ledger. Uh, it is a blockchain for an energy and environmental commodity trading. And uh, Dr. Green has also, is also the EY FinTech Entrepreneur of the Year. So over to you, Gemma. Thanks. Good morning. Thank you so much for having me. We're um, at PowerLedger. We're trying to solve the problem of fossil-based power generation, and that's really our sector. Um, but it's not just good enough to replace fossil fuel based energy with solar and wind because they're two entirely different things and you can see that from uh, the graph here. Um, we've got what is effectively a variable source of renewable energy uh, and fossil fuel generation um, is more stable, uh, more dispatchable, more predictable. And so you can't just swap one out for another. And then I think coupled with that, um, we have um, pricing mechanisms or um, incentives that are encouraging the deployment of renewable energy, not where it's needed and not when it's needed. Um, and we call this a time and place based problem if you turn to the next slide. And both of these problems need to be solved to actually get to 24 seven renewable energy. Otherwise, what happens is you need more um, more distribution and transmission line to move electricity from where it's generated to where it's consumed. And you also need more grid stabilisation services um, to stabilise the grid. Ultimately, both cost a lot of money. You can see the consequences of centralised planning of uh, variable renewable energy in countries that have a high penetration of um, VRE. So this is a graph showing on the left the cost of energy and on the right percentage penetration of VRE and Germany and Denmark are in the far right corner with the highest penetration and the highest energy costs in the world. And the blue dots represent a residential electricity, but the orange dots importantly are commercial and industrial power costs. And I think that's important to distinguish because many people would say the high cost of um, uh, energy um, as a result of renewables is because of high feed-in tariff costs that are passed on to consumers. But that uh, really obscures uh, two other big issues, which is the network costs and also grid stabilisation costs, where VRE is encouraged through blunt price signals, which has basically resulted in lots of uh, energy being built not where near where it's needed and not when it's needed. The power ledger platform is really focused on creating two additional market layers to deal with this time and place based problem. We're all familiar with wholesale electricity markets. That is what we call layer four. And then at the top and then at the bottom here, you can see a layer one, which are buildings. Um, and we work at layer two and three. So layer three is a flexible, a regional flexibility services market grid stabilization um, to defer or avoid network augmentation. Uh, and um, uh, and also layer two, which is a two-sided market energy sharing to reduce grid export during the day and import at night in parts of the grid that are congested. So layer two deals with grid congestion caused by variable renewable energy and great, layer three um, also deals with congestion, but also other um, grid stabilisation services such as uh, localised issues such as voltage and reactive power. And a uh, layer two is a first line of defense uh, against the need for more expensive flexibility services. Uh, basically the principle behind it is how do we encourage uh, trading in uh, discrete parts of the grid for which there is congestion um, and the maximize the trading activity and in doing so reduce or minimize grid export during the day and import at night. Um, the more trading activity that occurs um, the better existing renewable assets in the grid are um, utilised uh, and that basically will reduce the need for energy from the superior grid, grid stabilisation services and network augmentation. This is the basic premise of it. And so it's the opposite of that graph that you saw a moment ago, which is basically the heart, more you push renewables up in the system from centralised planning, from blunt price signals such as feed-in tariffs, 
the more um, you have these kind of secondary and tertiary impacts on the grid. And ironically, Germany, which has the highest penetration of renewables in the world, also has the highest costs, high carbon content, and also um, an unstable system. And so this is, I, I think, one of the, the concerns that many people have with uh, renewable energy per se, but indeed it's actually centralised planning of renewable energy. We have a project in New South Wales that we're doing with Endeavour Energy um, uh, at Riverstone East. And this is a site that currently has about 30,000 people um, or metres connected and will grow um, uh, almost double in the next seven years. So we're doing actually a layer two and layer two, layer three um, project there to defer the augmentation of the Riverstone East substation. Um, and it's a combination of energy sharing and flexibility services procurement using our platform, uh, working also with Transgrid and uh, the University of Melbourne and um, several retailers and aggregators, including um, Tango and Evergen and Zen. Um, and this is really a demonstration project to show how uh, renewables can be scaled without having the corresponding growth in grid stabilisation costs and also network upgrade costs as well. Um, so we're really excited about this. It's drawing upon a um, project that has um, done a similar thing in some respects in Germany, um, but also um, Powerledger has been operating for more than five years and has about 20 clients in 10 countries um, around energy sharing, uh, grid stabilisation, um, trading, and also um, trading of renewable energy certificates. And it's all centred around um, how do we scale renewables without having these um, unintended and perverse consequences. And uh, that draws me to the end of my formal presentation. Thank you. Thanks, Gemma. Thanks very much. It looks like you've got the solutions uh, for a grid of the 21st century. Really, thanks for sharing your wisdom and your experience. Really excited to see where it's come in the last five years.